Hey Danny, are you ready for me to show you how to build an award-winning 125th scale model kit for the out-of-the-box category for the upcoming model car contest? Sure, Trevor. I'm all ready to jump in and take off, but where do we begin? I'm glad you asked that question, Danny. Well, let's take a look at those contest rules again and see what the judges are looking for in the out-of-the-box category. Okay, Danny, here we have the contest categories and rules sheets for both the Rocky Mountain Model Club and the Automotive Model Builders Club. Well, hold on. What contest are we going to build our model for? We will build our cars for a fictitious contest, Danny. You see, if we read the rules for both contests and plan for an imagined ultimate contest, then we can build a model that can win at any contest. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, and we can compile a checklist from these rules so that we have one master list that we can use to build all our models going forward. That way we can never miss a step. Yes, and that is the key to building contest quality models, Danny. You have to know the rules of the game before you can break the rules. Ooh, that's some fourth level wizardry you're talking about, Trevor. I know, Danny, and it has paid off for me in the past too. So let's reread the relevant rules. Here's our first sheet, which is the contest rules from the 16th annual Auto Model Rama. Classes, out of the box street competition. Only parts from a single specific edition of an automotive model kit may be used. Each kit must be constructed in the manner intended by the kit manufacturer. No aftermarket parts are permitted except for chrome foil and flocking. No part swapping of any kind is permitted. No wiring or plumbing, antennas, photo etch parts, etc. are permitted except when included with the kit and shown on the instruction sheet. No parts can be created from kit, sprue, or putty. Molded on chrome trim, drip rails, handles, emblems, etc. cannot be removed. Only decals included with the kit may be used. Body panels cannot be opened or hinged. Putty can be used to fill sink marks, but not to alter the shape of parts or to make body modifications. Manufactured logos and copyrights can be removed by sanding, etc. Parts can be drilled out to enhance their appearance, such as exhaust tips, carburetor venturis, etc., but not to alter the basic shape of parts. Any painting or abrasive technique can be used to create surface textures. Chrome-plated parts can be stripped and painted or replated by a plating service. Instruction sheets may have to be shown. All right, I got that. Okay, and here's the rules from the Rocky Mountain Contest. Let's start with the judging guidelines for automotive and then look at the class rules. Here's judging guidelines autos. Basic construction. A model is a winner only if it passes the basics. It will be easy to find the winners if you remove the ones that do not meet the basics. Mold lines should be removed. This also means small parts and wheels. The chassis should be even and all wheels should be touching the ground. Clear parts should be free of any glue smears or fingerprints. Paint should be free from fingerprints and runs. Orange peel is a no-no. Overspray is only acceptable if the car is a rendition from a high school paint shop. Window frames and molding should be straight. Decals should be straight and without silvering. Finishing. Does the model look close to a scaled down real thing? Is the weathering done without going overboard? Engines. If the engine is wired, it should be in the right sequence. Plumbing should go to the correct locations. Engine exhaust should be correctly attached to the motor. Correct thickness of the wires and plumbing should be observed. Interiors. Are they a correct replication of the original? Do the colors correspond? Seat belts? It's the law. Tires. Are they round? Don't laugh. Is the lettering done correctly and seam removed? Overall, judging automobiles is usually the toughest. When in doubt, check for the proper information regarding the car. Don't be afraid to consult with the other judges. Now this is from a different newsletter, but this is RMMC clarifies the category rules. Out of the box consists of anything you find only in the basic kit. Obviously, some manufacturers are more inclusive than others. But that's the brakes, right? Okay, so I got that too. All right, Danny, 
Now let's make a list of everything we have learned from these three sheets of paper so that we can build our winning car. Danny, before we begin with this project, I want you to know that building a plastic model car kit to win the out of the box class is all about precision and presentation. In this class, you're judged on how well you build the model straight from the kit without any extensive modifications. This sounds serious. There's a lot more to it than just building for your own pleasure and not showing anyone your build except for a few friends and family that will always tell you that you did a good job. At a contest, your model will be shown to a panel of judges that will pick a winner based on how well that model meets the fundamentals before it is judged on the execution of those basics before the judges consider other factors like the risk, effort, or creativity. Those are some pretty high stakes. It does seem like a high benchmark to reach, and you should be prepared not to place in the overall judging. Sometimes you just might not win despite all your efforts. Be ready to accept defeat just as well as you would accept a victory. So it's all about the mindset? Yes, Danny. Don't get discouraged. Building a good quality model is really quite simple. Making a checklist so you don't forget anything just ups your game. Sounds good. Let's take a look at your list. Okay, Danny, it's extensive, so get ready. Model Kit Construction Checklist for Out of the Box Contest Class. 1. Model Kit Preparation and Research Did I find a model kit that matches the contest class and my skill level? Have I built this model before? What were my issues with the kit? How did I solve them? Did I find out if anyone else built this model before on YouTube or in an online post or blog? Did they find any problems with building this kit? How did they solve it? Did I note the problems and issues and solutions for later reference? Should I buy a second copy of this kit and use the first copy as a walkthrough to see how it goes together? Did I gather up research material on the real car from magazines, pictures, and online? Car schematics and repair manuals also help out. Do I have these on hand? Did I research the actual car parts? How do they look? Are they painted? How are they attached to the car and other parts? Have I read the instruction sheet three times to familiarize myself with the assembly and painting process? Do I know what all the construction symbols mean? Did I fill in all the paint color boxes with their matching colors from the paint guide chart? If the colors are printed on the instruction sheet beside the part, did I highlight these so I can see them? Check the kit parts. Is everything there? If not, what is missing? Will it affect this build? How do I solve the issue? Check the clear and the plated parts. Are they scratched? How do I fix them? Maybe use automotive wax or the Molotol paint pen on the chrome? Are the parts washed and cleaned of mold release agents and fingerprint oils? Did I locate all of the part seam lines and flash? Did I remove all the seam lines and flash? Did I eliminate any unnecessary cross braces and marked removed pieces? Are the mold marks removed from all the parts? Do I need to fill any sink marks? Do I need to deepen the panel lines? Do I need to add panel lines? Do I dry fit the parts before assembly or painting? Do they fit together without any issues? Are all the relevant parts used from this kit and this kit only? Do I have all my hobby tools, paint brushes, glue and paints to complete this model? Do I have enough chrome foil and or chrome paint? Are my tools clean, sharp, and in good condition? Rules clarification questions. If the kit has build options, does building those options change the model's class, or is it okay to build it as a hot rod and enter it into the out-of-the-box category? Is using decals from another kit or the aftermarket okay to use? Did I check this with the judges? Is flocking and chrome foil acceptable? Did I use either of these? Did I contact the judges with these questions, or am I just going to risk it? Part 3. Paint Preparation and Putty Work Do the colors I have correspond to the real car? Do I have all the colors I need, or do I have to buy some more? Do I have the equipment I need to paint the car? Brush, spray can, and or an airbrush? 
Do I have items to clean the model and eliminate static electricity? Do I need to custom mix colors for this model? If so, what are they? If I am mixing a color, do I have a clean container with a lid to put the paint into? Do I have enough paint and paint thinner? Do I know the technique to apply the paint and or spray paint? Did I read all of the product safety and application labels? Do I know how to apply the product properly? Do I know how long the paint and glue take to dry? Did I allow enough paint to dry before I handle the parts? All right, I'm exaggerating. This is a really old dusty kit, but you get the idea. Do I have somewhere warm, safe, and dust-free to put my freshly painted parts so they can dry? Primer. Am I going to use it? Is it compatible with my color paints and my clear coat paint? Do I need to clear coat my model or is it glossy enough as it is? Do I know how to use metallics and powdered pearl paints? If I'm going to paint my model with metallic colors, do I have a proper gold, silver, or copper base on the model before I begin? Is my paint too old or is it still okay? Is the body sanded with fine sandpaper before I apply paint and or putty? Is the body and putty feathered out and sanded smooth before I apply the primer coat? If I paint this white, is the red plastic color going to bleed through the paint and turn this whole thing pink? How do I prevent colored plastic bleed through? Will the primer color seal it up? Is the primer coat sanded and smooth before I apply the color coat? Is the color coat sanded and smooth before I apply the clear coat? Is the clear coat polished out and waxed before I bring it to the contest? Are there any visible paint windows? Did I miss painting any area that can be clearly seen as bare plastic from some strange angle? Paint consistency. Is everything covered with an even coat or does it look thin in spots? Did I use one, two, or three coats of paint in order to cover the model properly? Final paint quality. Is it free from dust, hairs, bugs, runs, sags, orange peel, crazing, fish eyes, or other issues? Part 4. Decals. Do the decals include car emblems, gauges, or other important details? Do I know where they go? Will I use them? Do I use setting solution for the decals? Are the decals straight and free from silvering? Are the decals locked under a clear coat or just sitting on the surface? Part 5. Build Through Questions Am I giving myself enough time to build the model before the contest starts? Is this days, weeks, or months? How long does it take to build this model? Am I taking my time or am I rushing? Am I allowing enough time between paint coats for the paint to gas out and dry? Am I constantly checking my work to make sure that the parts fit together? Have I removed the paint and chrome from the contact surfaces before gluing the parts together? Do the parts fit together? If not, how do I fix a problem? Am I giving myself enough downtime between assemblies so I don't feel rushed or overwhelmed? Part 6. Final Construction Do all four wheels evenly touch the ground? Are all of the clear parts free from glue marks and fingerprints on both sides? Are the window frames molding and trim straight? Do the exhaust pipes connect to the exhaust manifolds? Did I drill out the ends of the exhaust pipes for a more realistic finish? Are all of the molded on trim, drip rails, handles, emblems, etc. still on the model and intact? Did I make sure there were no extra parts made from putty or sprue? Did I build the model just like it says in the instructions? Did I use the kit supplied decals? Did I make sure not to miss any of the small details like the writing on the tires or anything else? Did I follow the contest class rules about not opening body panels like the doors and trunk unless these parts are included as being opened in the instructions? Did I make sure not to alter the basic part shapes? If I opened up the grills, did I make sure not to change their basic shape? If my kit includes seat belts, do I have them installed? Are the tires sanded and round? Are they seated on the axles and rims and do they roll straight? Is the interior accurate to the real car, or does it at least look accurate? Does my model have a gotcha factor? Something that catches the eye and makes you say, wow! Part 7. Bringing the model to the contest. Are my kits packed and protected in a safe travel container? Did I bring tools and glue in case I need to make a repair at the contest? Do I have the instruction sheet with my model in case I have to show my steps to the judges? 
And finally, did you make sure you did everything on this checklist and checked it off? Wow, that seems like a lot of things to do. Yes, Danny, it does. But it won't take long and not every build needs all of these things done. For example, I might not want to clear coat my model if the gloss is good and shiny. What would be the point? And if I don't want to use flocking for the carpet, it's not mandatory that it's there. So the list is somewhat selective? Yes, Danny. It's all based off your skills and what you are comfortable in doing to your kit. If you are more comfortable brush painting your model than spray painting or airbrushing it, then go with what you know. I made a complete video on brush painting a model car kit, which I will post in the link above. Oh good, I was worried that I couldn't fulfill the list. I'll have to look at that brush painting video after we finish making this video. That's a good idea, Danny. Maybe our viewers have some more ideas to add to this list that I have forgotten. Hopefully they will share those ideas with us in the comment section down below. I hope that if they like this video that they will subscribe, hit the bell icon, and turn on their notifications. That'd be nice too, Danny. Now carrying on with the video, let's start with the first item. Finding a model kit that matches your skill level. Okay, that sounds like a good start. Okay, so I have discovered that there are pretty much five different types of model kits to meet every skill out there. The first is the curbside or skill level 1 kits. These include the Craftman series of kits from AMT, Super Snap from Lindbergh, and Wheels of Fire from Ravel. There are no engines. The wheels and tires mount on a single chassis pan. The interior is a bucket style with seats, a dashboard, and a steering wheel. The body is one piece with a closed hood, and there are chrome bumpers and taillights. All right, that's where I would be starting. Next up is the entry level skill level 2 kits. These kits are very much like the skill level 1 kits, but they include a multi-part engine. Sometimes these kits include extra customizing parts to build them as simple race cars, mild customs, radical customs, and lowriders. Keep these kits in mind for other contest builds as well. There's some neat cars in there for sure. The extra options would be cool to try without going out of my skill level. Yes, Danny, these kits can be fun to build without getting too invested. So now, Danny, if you are feeling more confident with your builds, you can try these more moderate skill level 2 kits. Okay, so what makes these ones different from the last pile? With these kits, they have all the suspension parts molded separately from the chassis pan. Oh, so I don't have to try and steer the paintbrush around those molded in exhaust pipes? No, Danny. Now you can paint them as a separate part and then glue them to the chassis. They look more realistic, too. The interior is still a bucket style with the floor, door panels, package shelf, and firewall molded in as one piece, though. You'll even find clear headlights with these kits instead of molded chrome lights. That's more realistic. Now we have the Advanced Skill Level 2 kits. These kits have a fully detailed engine and engine bay, separate frame with multi-piece suspension, a floor slash chassis pan, separate door panels and seats, thus eliminating the one-piece interior tub, separate exhaust system and fully independent wheels, so no more metal axles tying two wheels together. So these are the full-on detail car kits? That's right, Danny. I really need to get my skills up before I try one of those kits. If you can do that, Danny, then you can also build skill level 3 to skill level 5 kits. The only difference with these kits is more parts in the assembly, like posable steering, more opening body panels, and even photo etch parts and detailing wires for the engine and brakes. That sounds exciting, but what is the fifth type of kit? I like to call these mixed level kits. Why is that? It's because they have strange features from one skill level to another. For example, these kits here have an interior tub with opening doors. So that means that the tub interior puts it in a moderate skill level, but the opening doors puts it in an advanced skill level 3 area. They also feature posable wheels, which would also put them as advanced. That is odd. It gets stranger with some of these Japanese kits as well. These ones have a frame similar to a skill level 1 kit with the engine molded to the chassis pan, but then you have a high level parts count on interior and body panels and posable wheels. Some even have electric motors to turn the wheels like battery operated toys. So what is this type of kit? Skill 1 or advanced skill 2 or is it a complicated toy? Wow, I see what you mean. That sure makes it difficult. 
Don't be too worried, Danny. Over the years, you and I have unboxed a lot of these model kits to show our viewers what was in the box so they could find a model kit to match their skills and not go into the hobby store unprepared and accidentally buy something below or above their skill level. Yeah, model building is not fun if you buy the wrong thing. Okay, Danny, I think that's enough information for you, me, and our entire audience to think about. So let's stop the video here and then we'll let everybody take a look at that checklist again, digest it in their minds, and then next week we'll come back and start the build for our out of the box model kit category. For sure! I think I have to stop here too. There's a lot to go over and I think I need to watch this video again to get it all in. That's okay. I'll also have to go back and watch this video again and then gather up everything I need in order to build an out-of-the-box model. Then I'll have to look back at my video library to see what's in these boxes and pick something out. Make sure that the skill levels are all there. So uh, basic, medium, and advanced. And then I also have to research my model, gather the tools and supplies in order to start. Yeah, and make sure you clean your workstation too. For sure, Danny. So for the purpose of the next video, let's grab three skill level two model kits. The first one will be an entry level model kit. The second one will be a moderate model kit. And then the third one, let's go for an advanced model kit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick GM cars and then Danny, I will be able to show you how I'm going to build them for the out of the box contest. Oh boy, I can't wait to see how you do that. It's going to be good, Danny, and I'm sure you won't want to miss out. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Click that notification bell so that you won't miss any further episodes. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.